Now this is the account of the earth and its gold. It is an account of the beginning and how the celestial gods created were. In the beginning, when in the above, the gods in the heavens had not been called into being, and in the below, Ki, the firm ground, had not yet been named. Alone in the void, there existed Absu, their primordial begetter. In the heights of the above, the celestial gods had not yet been created. In the waters of the below, the celestial gods had not yet appeared. Above and below, the gods had not yet been formed. Destinies were not yet decreed. No reed had yet been formed. No marshland had appeared. Alone did Absu reign in the void. Then by his winds, the primordial waters were mingled. A divine and artful spell Absu upon the waters cast. On the void's deep, he poured a sound sleep. Tiamat, the mother of all, as a spouse for himself he fashioned. A celestial mother, a watery beauty she was indeed. Beside him, Absu, little Mamu, then brought forth, as his messenger he him appointed a gift for Tiamat to present, a gift resplendent to his spouse Absu granted, a shining metal, the everlasting gold, for her alone to possess. Then it was that the two their waters mingled, divine children between them to bring forth. Male and female were the celestials created, Lamu and Lahamu, by names they were called. In the below did Absu and Tiamat make them an abode. Before they had grown in age and in stature in the waters of the above, Anshar and Kishar were formed. Surpassing their brothers in size they were. As a celestial couple, the two were fashioned. A son, An, in the distant heavens was their heir. Then An too, to be his spouse, as An's equal, was brought forth. As a boundary of the upper waters, their abode was made. Thus were three heavenly couples, below and above, in the depths created. By names they were called the family of Apsu with Mamu and Tiamat they formed. At that time Nibiru had not yet been seen. The earth was not yet called into being. Mingled were the heavenly waters. By a hammered bracelet, they were not yet separated. At that time, circuits were not yet fully fashioned. The destinies of the gods were not yet firmly decreed. The celestial kinfolk banded together. Erratic were their ways. Their ways to Absu were verily loathsome. Tiamat, getting no rest, was aggrieved and raged. A throng to march by her side she formed, a growling, raging host against the sons of Absu she brought forth. Withal, eleven of this kind she brought forth. She made the firstborn, Kingu, chief among them. 
When the celestial gods of this did hear, for counsel they rallied. Kingu she has elevated, to rank as an command, to him she gave, to each other they said. A tablet of destiny to his chest she has attached, his own circuit to acquire, to battle against the gods, her offspring, Kingu, she instructed. Who shall stand up to Tiamat? The gods asked each other. None in their circuits stepped forward. None a weapon for battle would bear. At that time, in the heart of the deep, a god was engendered. In a chamber of fates, a place of destinies, was he born. By an artful creator was he fashioned. The son of his own son he was. From the deep where he was engendered, the god from his family in a rushing departed. A gift of his creator, the seed of life, with him away he carried. To the void he set his course, a new destiny he was seeking. The first to glimpse the wandering celestial was the ever watchful and too. Alluring was his figure, a radiance he was beaming. Lordly was his gait, exceedingly great was his course. Of all the gods, he was the loftiest, surpassing theirs his circuit was. The first to glimpse him was Antu, her breast by child never sucked. Come, be my son, she called to him. Let me your mother become. She cast her net and made him welcome, made his course for the purpose suited. Her words filled the newcomer's heart with pride. The one who would nurse him made him haughty. His head to doubled size grew larger. Four members at his sides he sprouted. He moved his lips in acceptance, a godly fire from them blazed forth. Toward Anne, too, his course he turned, his face to Anne soon to show. When Anne saw him, My son, my son, with exultation he shouted, To leadership you shall be consigned, A host by your side will be your servants, let Nibiru be your name, as crossing forever known. He bowed to Nibiru, turning his face at Nibiru's passage. He spread his net, for Nibiru four servants he brought forth, his host by his side to be, the south wind, the north wind, the east wind, the west wind. With joyful heart and to Anshar his forebear, the arrival of Nibiru announced. Anshar, upon this hearing, Gaga, who was by his side, as an emissary sent forth, words of wisdom to Anne deliver, a task to Nibiru to assign. He charged Gaga to give voice to what was in his heart. To Anne thus say, Tiamat, she who bore us, now detests us. She has set up a warring host. She is furious with rage. Against the gods, her children, eleven warriors march by her side. King Yu, among them she elevated. A destiny to his chest she attached without right. No god among us against her venom can stand up. Her host in us all has fear established. Let Nibiru become our avenger. Let him vanquish Tiamat. Let him save our lives. For him decree a fate. 
let him go forth and face our mighty foe. To Anne, Gaga departed. He bowed before him. The words of Anshar, he repeated. And to Nibiru, his forebear's words repeated. Gaga's message to him, he revealed. To the words Nibiru with wonder listened, of the mother who would her children devour with fascination he heard. His heart, without saying, to set out against Tiamat, him already prompted. He opened his mouth to Anne and Gaga, he thus said. If indeed I am to vanquish Tiamat, your lives to save, convene the gods to assembly, my destiny proclaim supreme. Let all the gods agree in council to make me the leader, bow to my command. When Lamu and Lahamu heard this, they cried out with anguish. Strange was the demand, its meaning cannot be fathomed, thus they said. The gods who decree the fates with each other consulted. To make Nibiru their avenger they all agreed, to him an exalted fate decreed. From this day on, unchallengeable shall be your commandments, to him they said. No one among us gods shall transgress your bounds. Go, Nibiru, be our avenger. They fashioned for him a princely circuit toward Tiamat to proceed. They gave Nibiru blessings. They gave Nibiru awesome weapons. Anshar, three more winds of Nibiru brought forth. The evil wind. The whirlwind. The matchless wind. Kishar, with a blazing flame, filled his body, a net to enfold Tiamat therewith. Thus ready for battle, Nibiru toward Tiamat directly set his course. Now this is the account of the celestial battle and how the earth had come to be, and of Nibiru's destiny. The Lord went forth, his fated course he followed. Toward the raging Tiamat he set his face, a spell with his lips he uttered. As a cloak for protection, he the pulser and the emitter put on. With a fearsome radiance, his head was crowned. On his right he posted the smiter, on his left the repeller he placed. The seven winds, his host of helpers, like a storm he sent forth. Toward the raging Tiamat he was rushing, clamoring for battle. The gods thronged about him. Then from his path they departed. To scan Tiamat and her helpers alone he was advancing. The scheme of Kingu, her host's commander, to conceive. When he saw valiant Kingu, blurred became his vision. As he gazed upon the monsters, his direction was distracted. His course became upset. His doings were confused. Tiamat's band tightly her encircled. With terror they trembled. Tiamat to her roots gave a shudder. A mighty roar she emitted. On Nibiru she cast a spell, engulfed him with her charms. The issue between them was joined. The battle was unavoided. Face to face they came, Tiamat and Nibiru. Against each other they were advancing. They for battle approached. 
they pressed on for single combat. The Lord spread his net to encompass her, he cast it. With fury, Tiamat cried out. Like one possessed, she lost her senses. The evil wind, which had been behind him, Nibiru drove forward. In her face, he let it loose. She opened her mouth, the evil wind to swallow, but could not close her lips. The evil wind charged her belly. Into her innards it made its way. Her innards were howling. Her body was distended. Her mouth was open wide. Through the opening, Nibiru shot a brilliant arrow, a lightning most divine. It pierced her innards, her belly it tore apart. It tore into her womb. It split apart her heart. Having thus subdued her, her life breath he extinguished. The lifeless body Nibiru surveyed, like a slaughtered carcass Tiamat now was. Beside their lifeless mistress, her eleven helpers trembled with terror. In Nibiru's net they were captured. Unable they were to flee. Kingu, who by Tiamat was made the host's chief, was among them. The Lord put him in fetters. To his lifeless mistress he bound him. He wrested from Kingu the tablets of destinies, unrightly to him given, stamped it with his own seal, fastened the destinies to his own chest. The others of Tiamat's band as captives he bound, in his circuit he them ensnared. He trampled them underfoot, cut them up to pieces. He bound them all to his circuit, to turn around he made them backward to course. From the place of the battle, Nibiru then departed. To the gods who had him appointed the victory to announce. He made a circuit about Apsu. To Kishar and Anshar he journeyed. Gaga came out to greet him as a herald to the others he then journeyed. Beyond An and Antu, Nibiru to the abode of the deep proceeded. The fate of lifeless Tiamat and of Kingu he then considered. To Tiamat, whom he had subdued, the Lord Nibiru then returned. He made his way to her, paused to view her lifeless body, to artfully divide the monster in his heart he was planning. Then, as a muscle, into two parts he split her. Her chest from her lower parts he separated. Her inner channels he cut apart. Her golden veins he beheld with wonder. Trotting upon her hinder part, the lord her upper part completely severed. The north wind his helper, from his side he summoned. To thrust away the severed head, the wind he commanded, in the void to place it. Nibiru's wind upon Tiamat then hovered, sweeping upon her gushing waters. Nibiru shot a lightning. To north wind he gave a signal. In a brilliance was Tiamat's upper part to a region unknown carried. With her, the bound Kingu was also exiled, of the severed part a companion to be. The hinder part's fate Nibiru then considered. As an everlasting trophy of the battle he wished it to be, a constant reminder in the heavens, the place of the battle to enshrine. With his mace, the hinder part he smashed to bits and pieces, then strung them together as a band to form a hammered bracelet. 
locking them together as watchmen he stationed them, a firmament to divide the waters from the waters. The upper waters above the firmament from the waters below it he separated. Artful works Nibiru thus fashioned. The Lord then crossed the heavens to survey the regions. From Apsu's quarter to the abode of Gaga he measured the dimensions. The edge of the deep Nibiru then examined. Toward his birthplace he cast his gaze. He paused and hesitated. Then to the firmament, the place of the battle, slowly he returned. Passing again in Apsu's region, of the sun's missing spouse he thought with remorse. He gazed upon Tiamat's wounded half. To her upper part he gave attention. The waters of life, her bounty, from the wounds were still pouring. Her golden veins Apsu's rays were reflecting. The seed of life, his creator's legacy, Nibiru then remembered. When he trod on Tiamat, when he split her asunder, to her the seed he surely imparted. He addressed words to Absu, to him thus saying, with your warming rays to the wounds give healing. Let the broken part new life be given in your family as a daughter to be. Let the waters to one place be gathered. Let firm land appear. By firm land let her be called Key, henceforth her name to be. Apsu to the words of Nibiru gave heed. Let the earth join my family. Key, firm land of the below. Let earth her name henceforth be. By her turning let their day and night be. In the days my healing rays to her I shall provide. Let King Yu be a creature of the night. To shine at night I shall appoint him. Earth's companion, the moon forever to be. Nibiru, the words of Apsu, with satisfaction heard. He crossed the heavens and surveyed the regions. To the gods who had him elevated, he granted permanent stations. Their circuits he destined, that none shall transgress nor fall short of each other. He strengthened the heavenly locks, gates on both sides he established. An outermost abode he chose for himself, beyond Gaga were its dimensions. The great circuit to be his destiny, he beseeched Absu for him to decree. All the gods spoke up from their stations. Let Nibiru's sovereignty be surpassing. Most radiant of the gods he is. Let him truly the son of the sun be. From his quarter, Absu gave his blessing. Nibiru shall hold the crossing of heaven and earth. Crossing shall be his name. The gods shall cross over neither above nor below. He shall hold the central position. The shepherd of the gods he shall be. A shar shall be his circuit that his destiny will forever be.